I think this is the first time that anyone has recorded my voice properly. I listened to those Chester and Edwards. I sounded like a 12 year old girl. I mean, press the reverb button. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Leather Leon, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I was gonna ask you like, hey, what's the energy level for this new release? But I think uh, people will quickly get a sense of the energy that you're bringing to the table today. I think so. Um, yeah, this is really invigorating for me. I'm, I'm so proud of this record. I think it's the best thing I've ever done. And I'm just really excited. It's a bigger label for me. I wrote this stuff with my guitar player. It's, just, it's a really good feeling. It's a good place right now. You kind of came back in 2011. We obviously remember the Keep It True show that you did um, with some of your older friends. Um, and since then, you've never really been away, but this feels like the real comeback after 35 plus years. Is that fair? I agree with you 100%. I consider this like my first solo record. Um, yeah, this is the first time, and again, it's the theme of the whole record, it taking back control. Right. I've kind of been lazy and whimsical my whole life thinking everyone was on the same page as me and oh, it'll all be okay i don't feel like that anymore i gotta go i gotta go the window's closing um i'm just invigorated by all of it so yes I, I agree with you i think this really is my first solo record two happened really quickly it was just like shockwaves it was an opportunity that it happened i grabbed it i didn't really put a lot of thought into those records it was just like okay let's try it let's try it so this one and again, because of the pandemic, it was really, really planned. Vinny Tex and I had a lot of time to do this. And I think it shows. It shows, yeah. absolutely. You know, Letter 2 felt rushed. Yes. Uh, the, the, Chast the modern Chastain records felt rushed. Uh, your first Letter solo album didn't fell 100%, feel 100% I've never as well. really had a lot of time. I've never had a lot of time to record these records. Right. It's like here you have 12 hours to do 12 songs so with just staying i would have like 25 hours and it, yeah so this is really the first time in a big studio i could take my time i could do what i wanted and i am grateful i am not being disrespectful for anyone or any of those opportunities um but this was just a really big step for me and, and again it shows in the record it's the most professional thing i've done yeah, yeah yeah so so in that entire career you never were able to get out of the mark varney shrapnel kind of way of recording stuff <laughs> uh you know no. whether it was with him or not awesome i mean i think he i think you know that the i think he recorded and put hours. out albums in a matter of hours at some point you know like <laughs> we'd have we'd have 50 hours to do a record and be like okay i'll get them two to three and yeah uh just to kind of make the connection with those um very early chastain records that were you know rushed as well by shrapnel records and that was kind of their thing but yeah. chastain uh, for a number of reasons in those days stood out for a number of things obviously uh there were very few let's call it you know raw power metal or proto power metal bands with with female singers uh but yes. if they did they didn't have that Th that rawness, you know, both in the singing and in the music, it was harsher than 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 at the time, you know, at heavy the time, metal. Yes. And this yeah. record kind of gives, in a way, there's a connection because it's not that you're trying to copy the old sound. This these are albums with a with a modern contemporary sound. It's it's modern power metal, um, you know. So it, it is as harsh now compared to other you know, modern power metal as the pre as the work that you started out with. Um, was that yes. um, a conscious thing going into it? Because nostalgia in, in metal, it can be a double-edged sword at best. No, it was not intentional. Vinny Tex, when I met him, in, when we really started working, 2016, he knew nothing about Chastain. And then he, we were touring together in different bands and he was turned on to Shockwaves. No, it was not intentional. Although he loves the 80s, 
I didn't want to do that. There were actually many ideas that we came up with that I was like, two chests in, let's go away. So it wasn't intentional. It had a lot to do with him. His, his idea of melody, idea of melody um, really helped to me. Um, it, it, but you know, it's always going to be my voice, you know that. But if it was right. up to me, I'd be making extreme metal records. I mean, I listen to Lamb of God and Arch Enemy. I was in the studio every day. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, and I think it just really worked out because he he's really an eclectic guitar player and he's not really a metal head. So he brought in, and he has played extreme metal, so he brought in all of these incredible elements. And he was really writing for my vocals. He really helped me think about the sense that I was trying to portray and also Hurt Studios. I think this is the first time that anyone has recorded my voice properly. I listened to those Chester and Edwards. I sounded like a 12 year old girl. I mean, press the reverb button, but that was the time. Right. No, I appreciate you saying that because I, I think, again, it will always be my voice. It will always be that nostalgia edge to it. But I think Vinnie helped me write some modern, more modern metal songs. It was very important to me to have um, like Lamb of God drums. That's all I kept saying to these guys. I need the extreme metal drums. And Braulio did that for me. Braulio German from uh, Brazil laid them down for me. So I thank you for saying that. It really wasn't intentional. It just really happened organically. It was great. Obviously, you know, no, doesn't matter when you'll be on stage after which album, people that come to your show, they'll bring a wish list of, of you know, classics and stuff like that. <laughs> now, in order for for your show and, and, and the new people around you to have that organic experience, if you will, or that um, to make sure that everything flows well, um, are, are the people you're working with today also kind of looking at some of those classics and see how would we tackle them in a more modern approach so that when you play them live yeah. it all feels a little bit more cohesive absolutely absolutely we, we we increase tempos we add killer drums we drop that we drop down from standard tuning from the 80s yes and in, in, in that being said i will always honor those songs i can never not do angel of mercy and voice of the call for those who dare i mean i owe that to everybody you know right but yeah, we, we, we modernize them a little bit. And my touring band that I had in 19, they would just go off on these songs. They would just do these crazy things that were beautiful. So the beauty of also working with younger musicians, um, they're just more exploratory. They aren't held down. Yeah, the Brazilian musician is really quite a wonderful animal. Um, they aren't as, of course, they're, they're so much younger than me, so they aren't jaded. A lot of my family in this country, you know, they're jaded, so we didn't play arenas, we didn't make all this money, blah, blah, blah. And they're just fresh and new, going, what can we do? How can we sound good? So that was very uplifting for me. But yeah, we definitely will modernize. We do modernize them a bit. We have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you, and you mentioned, you know, like, uh, we're, we're upping the tempo and adding some killer drums. If you look at the new album, um, there is a, let's call it a semi-power battle ballot in there with Shadows. But apart from that, it, there's no, you know, it's foot on the gas basically from start to finish. Um, yeah. No yeah. time for breaks anymore. <laughs> you know, when we wrote Shadows, it was so much slower. It was like doom <laughs> metal. But then, then when Brawley and Vinny got in the studio to lay the drum tracks, you know what, come on, there's hello ground. I am stuck in the 80s. I love Dio, dramatic um, ballad type songs with, um, you know, dynamics. I love right. dynamics. So, I mean, you remember, I don't know how old you are, but every 80s record had to have a, a ballad, right? Right. And again, we didn't sit down and think about it. It just happened. And again, a lot of stuff in pre-production got changed. It makes me think of Off With Your Head is my favorite song from the moment we started writing it. It's my favorite song. And Vinny put that da 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 He changed it. And I'm like, no, 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 do that. But of course he was right. So again, the eclecticness, if that is a word of him, really helped out this record. But yeah, I'm pretty much, a, although I love Sabbath, but I'm pretty... <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the record, you're you're trying some different approaches. Not 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 everything we've heard before from you. Um, yes. Was there um, maybe a two 
uh, you know, two part question. One, is there anything specific that you kind of discovered about yourself making this album or singing that that is really new to you, even after all this time? And as a follow up, were there things that were there ideas that were just like, you know what, I have to draw a line in the sand. Like this is too, too out there for me. As far as the part one, yes, I realized that I could write a freaking song. Um, I never, you know, Chastain was always a songwriter, and then I did other projects where there were like major songwriters I would do, but yeah, I could write a song, I could carry a song, that my ideas were good ideas. Um, and as far as, uh, yeah, I, I gotta tell you, I learned to shut up a little bit. Um, I learned to not go off so much. I learned to control my voice as opposed to trying to, I, I tried to do like a lot of Janis Joplin kind of just swallowing things. I actually learned more about that though. You bring it up in the live shows. I've been watching my live shows. There was a lot of stuff that I thought sounded great. And you know what? It doesn't. <laughs> so I tell everyone, listen to your live shows. But no, it, it just that I could do this. I. I was really concerned about that, you know, and I would talk to Vinny, I don't know, can we write a record? Can we do anything that's interesting? And um, we take back control it was the first song that we wrote. And I said, yeah, I think we're okay. But yeah, I learned in the studio, I learned to contain myself more and follow more of a, more of a format. That's where my strength is. You know, I don't hit any crazy ass notes. I just stay in the pocket. That's what I learned. I learned to hone it in, hone it in a little bit. Uh, I think you've described your t your time in Chastain at times as like being Aussie at Sabbath, just walking in for 30 minutes of recording and walking back out. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, now it doesn't say Chastain on the record. Now it says Letter on the record. Um, yeah. As exciting as that is, and as fun that it is to discover that you can write songs, is that also scary? Because now there's really nowhere to hide. This is your no, name is on the record. Not scary, not scary, frustrating. Like, oh, <laughs> is that how it goes? Oh shit! You mean that that vocal wasn't perfect? No, no, not, not scary at all. Uh, frustrated. Like I said, I thought it was amazing. I thought I was going in and laying down two tracks up for those who dare, and that was it. You know? Um, no, it, it was really an experience for me again to realize how to use my voice properly. I didn't realize all that went into it. I didn't realize about all the playbacks. I didn't realize that you went over every line, every verse. No, not scary. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, but again, you, you can tell from talking to me, my, it's really hard for me to concentrate. I just spin, I spin. So again, it would be frustrating sometimes to Vinny. But no, I loved it. I love it. I can't imagine doing it any other way now. I'm going to be there from the freaking beginning all the time now. I wasn't at the Keep It True Festival when you were doing that set. I've seen uh -huh. many recordings of it, and it mm -hmm. was a triumphant return. Like it was, it, it worked out really well, at least as as a as a viewer, as a listener. That festival alone has created some great reunions, but it also created some embarrassing shows. And um, when this, I think this was one of the first times that you kind of took control more, uh, or at least it came yeah. across that way um because that had to be in your mind like okay yeah it's been 25 years i want to be on that stage again but i also want to make sure that it's done the way i want it and not just doing what somebody else tells me to do you know that keep it true show was not a good show for me um i interesting i don't i don't play those i was back in 2017 i think too I have never proved myself at those fest at that festival. I don't think. Um, I, I uh, no, it, they were not good shows for me. In 2011, it was great. I mean, the feedback and you know it was so funny. It started pouring just before I went on, so that 3,200 people all came inside. It was pouring, but I don't feel that I that those shows were good for me. That's all I'm going to say. I was very disappointed. I was heartbroken. Um, but you know. I had someone say to me one time, and not in a narcissistic way, but they said, you have to understand that, you know, everybody can't sing. So you on your worst night, please us, you know? But yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not happy about those shows, but well, thank you. 
maybe maybe the silver lining of that experience, regardless of what happened behind the scene and 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 what have you. Yeah. Um, seeing those thirty five hundred people giving you that reaction Amazing. probably yeah. you know fed some of your energy or fueled some of your energy that's yes, still going yes. on today. Yes, of course it did. Of course it did. But my my voice, well, I know. Listen to me. I'm being so. I'm so grateful. But again, those were not. My yeah, yeah. voice wasn't up to par then. Um, and I think as an artist, everybody feels that way, right? I mean, you can't listen to your old records. Yeah, I, I need to go back to Kit and prove myself still. I need to go back and kill it. I don't think I ever have. Let's let's forget about the the, re, the the new release now. But up till this new release, what is what has been that proudest moment for you? Probably starting to tour again. When I, I got a call from a promoter in 2014 who had originally called up Chastain to tour, he's done. So he hooked me up with this promoter, and you know I just I just started killing it. I just started touring. I did the Rob Rock tour. I did some Reaper shows. I did the Raven tour. I was just so proud to be on stage again, playing clubs, you know, and that I could do it. People were there. Yeah. To, to prove it to myself that I could still do it. Because, you know, age is just a number, but still, you're kind of like, shit, can I still sing Black Knight? You know? <laughs> and I could. So it was really, I, I worked my ass off, but I could still do it. So, yeah, that was pretty fun. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. To see Leather <laughs> Leone tour, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and, and it, we're going to see that more and more now, obviously, because leather is really, it's not only the yeah. name of the singer, it's the brand, the whole concept. Yeah. In a in a, in a a somewhat ironic way as well, because not, not everybody might be aware, but you are vegan and leather is not necessarily your your um, fabric of choice. <laughs> let's let's say it. Is that that? No. It, 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 is 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 that name just like is that now a thing on its own and is so far removed from where your nickname yeah, came from? Yeah, so or? far removed from it. That actually started out when I went to college. I said it loosely, and I spent every <laughs> penny I had buying buying leather clothes. I became friends with a woman that worked at the Harley Davidson store, but I never had a bike. So I started singing in cover bands, and my name is Catherine Kathy. So people started calling me Kathy Leather as a joke. And when right. I moved to California in my early twenties, I think my first review. Because of the way I sang, they just called me leather and it just stuck. I know it's hysterical. I can't stand the stuff. Um, <laughs> I work with animals. So, yeah. so it's so ironic. But it's been happening for so long. I mean, my niece and nephew call me Aunt Leather. You know, I just don't even... Right, 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 right. <laughs> and I met someone the other day that had this like crazy name. I'm like, that's not your God given name, right? And they were like, oh, oh, like leather should talk. I'm like, yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's very awesome. funny. But awesome. they make everything I wear. They make great, great, great vegan clothes now. I mean, all the stuff I wear is fake. Um, what really gets you excited is not just releasing these new albums, but playing the music live and on stage yeah. and yeah. being yeah. on that road. So, uh, as we have to, you know, wrap up here. Um, what can you share already with all those people that are now finally noticing this 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 comeback of a legend um oh what, you're very kind you're look you, you when can we legend, see legend you on a stage oh come on come on legend legend is ronnie dio is a legend dickinson is a legend but all right all right i'll settle for I'm icon working, how about that <laughs> i'm working my ass off to get on the road with you i'm exactly. having meetings with people every day and you know things are really backlogged because of covid these agencies are trying to redo what didn't happen. That's my goal. I wanted to get this record situated. The label, thank you, SPB Steve Hammer, and um, that's all I'm. Yeah, that's all I'm working for. That's all I'm working for. I have nothing sound yet, but it, it'll come. It'll come. All right, we'll keep our eyes open and our fingers crossed that you'll come up here in Canada, or else we'll just have to fly to the to, to the states to me, yeah. or uh, or come see you at one of the many European festivals yes. this summer. Yes. Yes. Appreciative, yes. Letter, um, or uh, I was gonna say fake letter, but that doesn't sound good either <laughs> as a nickname. <laughs> uh, but letter, thank you so much for your time. I, I had a lot of fun yes. talking to you, and 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 uh, I, I feel very very privileged that I get to talk to you because whether or not oh, God, you like the term, I uh, I will still call you a legend any day of the week. Um, thank you so much for your time, and I wish you, you all the best with this. Thank you. I'll, I'll meet you soon. You just send a link to me because I love when I talk to fun people. You know, I like to share it. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe.
to the channel.